prepare to receive our tithes and offerings. The Spirit of the Lord put this on my heart again to bring to your remembrance, church. In fact, there's so much more in here than perhaps we've been appropriating. But the Lord has ministered to me again, just as he probably has been ministering to you as well. I mean, you know, when the Holy Spirit ministers to me or to you, he ministers many times the same things to us as a church. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is to guide us into what? All truth. Sometimes when we preach up here, we'll have people say, you know, that's exactly what the Lord was talking to me about this week. Well, why was that? That's because that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He knows your needs. He knows our needs. And he gives to us the message to deliver to you that even confirms what he's already been telling you. But then also he speaks in between the lines. Did you know that when we minister, that he'll minister to you right where you are? That we may, something, we may say something and he may say something entirely different in between the lines. It's all connected, but it ministers to your need. Well, anyways, why am I saying all this? Because last week, I didn't get to do it. But this week, the Lord brought this to my remembrance again in a very strong way strong way and if you have one of these prophecy cards would you pull it out at this time if you don't I'm going to ask the audio visual department in the back to TV ministry if they can put up the words to this prophecy given by Keith Moore on November 2nd 1997 we're going to speak these words together again We are actually doing the will of God right now, church. But here's what I want to say in relation to today's message and to what we're doing right now. What the Lord has put on my heart, which I'm going to be ministering to you on in just a little bit, is faith. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This is the word of God. This is the prophetic words of God that were spoken to us. And as we, listen to me now, church, as we appropriate this corporately and individually, and I'll reverse it now, individually and corporately, you will see this come to pass. Thank God for what we have seen. Thank God for what we've been doing all these years with this prophetic word. But when you hear today, I think you're going to see there's a lot more in it for us to receive. So we're going to say it together before we receive this morning's tithes and offerings. How many of you have this? Raise, it, raise your hand if you have it. Hands down. How many of you do not have one? Please raise your hand real high. Well, we're not gonna take the time this morning to pass these out. But John, can we make sure that we have whatever we have available today to make sure they're in the lobby? And please pick this up. If you are a member or even a guest, and we're so glad to have you at Words of Life today. If you are a member of Words of Life, please take one. If you are a guest today of Words of Life, Please take one. Because you see, this is not just specifically for this church, yet it was a word for this church, but the church is actually God's people. So you can, you, as, a, as a believer in Christ, even though you say, I, I don't go here, take this word for yourself because it's a word from the Holy Spirit. But folks, I am so excited about this word. You see, this word and I love the way our daughter Olivia says it when she describes the Bible. She says, the Bible is not just ink and paper. And this is not just ink and paper. This is the living word of God spoken to our hearts today and spoken through us, now listen, so that we can see it in our lives. Get ready, church. 
because I want you to see who you really are and who we really are and why we can help the world in times of tragedy. Why God's gonna be calling on the church and not the world to meet the needs of the world. Are you ready to say it with me this morning? Did you know the greatest institution on the face of the earth is the two greatest institutions are family and church? Thank God for ordained government, but I'm telling you, the most powerful force on the earth is the the body of Christ and the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you ready to say it with me? This was delivered to us by Reverend Keith Moore, Brother Keith Moore. And this is what he spoke as he heard it in his heart. I heard the spirit of the Lord say, you know what? I'm I'm gonna do something here just for a moment. I'm gonna read it one time through. Then I'm gonna have you read it with me because I want you to hear what God is about to say to us, church. It is my will that you, talking about this church, that you be known as a prosperous church. It is my will and my plan that it be noised abroad in this place and round about that this is a prosperous church. This is a generous church. That this is a rich, abounding church. It is my will that this be part of your witness. It is my will that this be part of your testimony and that others in the city and others in the communities can see that I have blessed you and see what I have done in your life and that you will be an example of what I'll do for them. Now listen very closely. It is my will that you be elevated. It is my will that you be prospered and that you be enlarged and that you be increased. Now get ready because this is what exploded, part of what exploded in me. And expanded far beyond where you are. It is my will. But church, listen to what I'm about to say. He just spoke his will to us through this prophetic word. But we have a part to play in it coming to pass. And here's our part. So accept my will. Submit to my will. Embrace my will. Believe and pursue my will. And it will be established in you and on you and upon you and through you and to you, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Now, my question to you today is, do you accept it? Do you submit to it? Do you embrace it? Do you believe and pursue it? Will it be established in you? Will it be established on you? Will it be established upon you? Will it be established through you? Will it be established to you? And everybody who agreed said, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, amen. Church, what am I saying to you? I'm telling you what God revealed, spoke to my heart about last week. And if this is my message today, this is my message today. But he said, words of life is a prosperous church. 
I want you to get this deep into your spirit and deep into your soul that you are more prosperous than you think you have been. He said, this is a prosperous church. He said, this is a generous church. He said, this is a rich abounding church. What does that mean? That means that you are a prosperous believer. That means that you are a generous believer. It means that you are a rich, abounding believer. And together, as we fulfill his will, the world will see and the world will hear all these words about Words of Life Fellowship Church and about us corporately and us individually. I'm telling you, God wants to make you richer than you've ever been in your life. The truth is he's already made us as rich as he is. But what we must learn to do is learn how to receive it, how to accept it, how to walk in the light of it, how to exercise it, how to use it all for his glory. So now, I want you to say it with me this morning. And here's what, I'm, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start saying this every time we get together until the Lord says, enough. <laughs> and he may never say that, glory to God. <laughs> because he always does more than enough. No, in other words, obviously, sometimes he, you know, he leads us to other things, other pastures, of course. But right now, there's an emphasis on this because he wants it to get inside of us, not just words on a card, but he wants these words to be in you because these words, listen to this, these words are him manifesting himself in you and to you and through you and for you and upon you. Folks, is there anybody here? Now I'm gonna ask you, is there anybody here who could use a little bit more money? If you're not raising your hand, come up here. I wanna pray for you, you liar, you. Liar, liar, pants on fire, glory to God. Liar. <laughs> I don't know about you. I'm gonna say it because the Lord gave me liberty to say it. But I desire to be a billionaire. Yes. Glory to God. Yes, sir. You see, you got to think like that before you get there. And before you can become a billionaire, you got to be a millionaire. But I'm going to say something that might shock you, totally shock you. And you say, Pastor, did you just say something contradictory to what you just said? No. God never promised to make you a millionaire or a billionaire. But he did promise that he, to make you rich. Now listen to what I'm about to say. You become a millionaire based on your own words. You become a billionaire based on your own words and your actions. The point I'm trying to make is in the mind of God, you're so far beyond millionaire and billionaire, it's not even funny. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There is no limit. See, man describes us, we, we, we put a financial limit even on ourselves. But God said, no, you're abundantly supplied. You've got more than enough. You're rich. Pastor Marcus, I'm just moving by the spirit. Come on up here, brother. Give him that microphone. This is all about Haiti and all about words of life and what we're about to do, folks, that is going to astound the world. I'm serious. Brother, tell them how rich they are right now. <laughs> you are very rich and very righteous. Amen. And that's the reason you are rich, because you are righteous. Amen. Don't you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ? He became poor. 
Um, she got it. He became poor that you might become rich. rich. So when I say I'm very rich, because you know what? Did he not, did God not appoint him heir of all things? Yes. Who are you joined to? Who are you joined to? Are you not one? He that is joined to the Lord is one. So everything that he said that belonged to the Father, he says, all that the Father has is? Say it. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. All things. All things. All, I, say, say this. I will not glory in man, for all things are mine. Are mine. It is written. It is written. <laughs> and you know what the father told the prodigal uh, son and told, told the elder son? He said, all that is mine is thine. Hallelujah. How rich is God? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's how rich you and I actually are in the spirit realm. In the spirit realm. So what am I saying to you? You want to be a millionaire? Do what it takes to be one. You want to be a billionaire? Do what it takes to be one. And what's the first thing you need to do to get there? First of all, if you haven't already given your heart to Jesus, give it to Jesus. Second of all, then seek him with all your heart Amen. from this day forward. There's a scripture that says in Isaiah, as long as I sought the Lord, he made me to prosper. I'm telling you, God wants to make millionaires. I'm gonna say it by faith. I'm, this is a faith day today. He wants to make, I know, yeah, yeah, I know we are. I know I am, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, he said, I'm gonna say it this way, Pastor Marcus. You're right on, I'm, I'm right there with you, brother. But he did say, follow me and I will make you. But you see, we have to go to where Pastor Marcus just declared, I am, I am, I am, I am. So I'm gonna declare it, God's making millionaires in this room. God's making millionaires. Because you are, because you are, because you are, because you are. Now I'm gonna go higher. God's making a billionaire. We'll start with one. <laughs> Maybe that might be you, you take it. I didn't say thus saith the Lord either on that one. I just want you to know that. No, we have something to do with it. We have something to do with this. Because you see, first of all, he's got to be able to trust you. Oh, don't shut. Oh, no. I, when I said that, it went. Ah, yeah. <laughs> because he's got to trust us with the nickels and the dimes and the quarters and the dollars and the five dollars and the ten dollars and the hundred dollars and the thousand dollars and the ten thousand dollars and the hundred thousand dollars. And the one million dollars. Here we go, here we go. And, and the tens of millions of dollars. Oh, here we go. Hundreds of millions of dollars. Are you ready? And a billion dollars. Woo! Glory to God. Let me read it to you again. The band's waiting for me. <laughs> band, hang in there. Hey, band, this is for you too. <laughs> Trust the Lord. Watch what he does for you. He said, trust in me with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge me. And I will, what? Direct your paths. He goes on to say, honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your increase. So shall your barns be filled with plenty and your presses shall burst out with new wine. It all begins, folks, with honor. Honoring the Lord with your finances. And as you do through your tithes and your offerings, and as we reach out, as we are led, remember, no matter what you do as a Christian, you must always be led. God may not have you do this. He may have you do this. But you do what he's asking you to do. And when you do what he's asking, when you do what he's asking you to do, 
then you're in position for miracles, signs, wonders. You're in, you're in position for manifestation that your heart has only dreamed about. Let me read it to you again. And today's message, I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna connect the dots right now. We haven't received it yet, have we? <laughs> okay. The Lord told me to minister until he tells me otherwise on faith. How many of you know this is faith right now in action? Faith believes what God says. Faith receives what God says. Faith acts on what God says. So folks, here's some of our instructions as we go higher in faith, deeper in faith in faith, further in faith, wider in faith. Let me read it to you. And I want you to hear it as if Jesus himself, because he actually is by the spirit of God, speaking this to you. I want you to hear his, I want you to hear his voice in these words. It is my will that you talking about this church, that you be known as a prosperous church. It is my will and my plan that it be noised abroad in this place and round about that this is a prosperous church. This is a generous church. That this is a rich abounding church. It is my will that this be part of your witness. It is my will. Are you hearing that? Yes. It is my will. This is God's will for you and me today, church, and for the rest of our lives. It is my will that this be part of your testimony. That means you gotta speak it. And that others in the city and others in the communities can see that I have blessed you. Everybody say, we're already blessed. blessed. And see what I have done in your life. He's already done it. Look what he's already done. And see what I have done in your life, but also for the future as well. And that you will be an example. That's what words of life is supposed to be. Words of life is supposed to be an example of what I'll do for them. Now here, I want to emphasize this part just a little bit more. Then we're going to receive... It is my will. I heard a great man of God say this. When you hear something being repeated over and over and over, it's because the Lord is trying to get something across to you. He actually said it this way. He said, if you hear it spoken more than more than once. If you hear it twice, that's God repeating himself. I'm putting it in my own words there. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We have to hear it again and again and again. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This is the word of God. So get ready. Here's the word of God. And I'm telling you, you might want to, un- I'll just say it. You might want to unstrap your seatbelt. And if you want to take off like I'm going to do right now, glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. What are you doing? I'm running with the vision. I'm running with the vision. That's what I'm doing. Glory to God. It's on the inside of me, church. It's on the inside of me. Is it on the inside of us? It's got to get on the inside of us. Glory to God. But also, I don't know if you know it, but miracles took place. Miracles are taking place. I'm going to do it again. The Lord wants me to. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going this way this time. Glory to God. 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 Now listen. Listen. 
When I was 30, I didn't huff and puff. <laughs> Glory to God. Here it comes. Here it comes. I'm telling you, church. Look inside. Look up. Your redemption draweth nigh. Listen to what he's going to just listen to what he's going to. Oh, I'm so happy. Listen to what he's about to say to us. It is my will that you be elevated. That means higher. He wants us to go higher. It is my will that you be elevated. It is my will that you be prospered and that you be enlarged and that you be increased. And here it comes again. And expanded far beyond where you are. Right now, you might be a millionaire. God wants to take you to multi, 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 multi millionaires. Right now, you might be a thousandaire. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God wants to take you into thousands, 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 thousands of heirs. You say, Pastor, I'm only a dollar in there. That's all right. God's going to take you into dollars, dollars. And he's going to turn those dollars into $10, into $20, into $50, into $100. Why? Because when you give to him, he multiplies. Glory to God. And sometimes the people who give a dollar gave more than the billionaires. And that's the truth. And that is the gospel truth. Hang in there, man. I'm going to get there. Listen to, oh, please hear, hear what God, what the Lord is saying to us. It is my will. But I'm going to say something. It's his will. But you and I have to receive his will. It's his will that no man perish. But we know men are perishing. You know, something could be God's will, but unless the person receives it, it is of no benefit to them. Eternal life is a gift. Salvation is a gift to the whole world. It's his will that not one man perish on planet earth. Not one woman, not one boy, not one girl go to hell. But we know that people are. And the only reason that they do, and I'm not talking about, and let me qualify that. I'm not talking about men, women, boys, and girls. I'm just talking generally speaking, man only goes to hell for one reason. It's because they reject Jesus Christ. If you're here today and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, make him your Lord. Receive his will for your life. His will is good. His will is his salvation for you. But let me finish this. It is my will that you be elevated. Oh, when you, when you hear that, let your heart just say, I agree with that, Father. I believe that. On the inside, it is my will that you be elevated. It is my will that you be prospered. Oh, folks, as much as we've prospered and we thank God for every blessing we have, we may not be where we, maybe where we would like to be, but thank God for what we have. Y'all you hear what I'm trying to say? Thank God that our needs are met daily according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Thank God that he daily loads us with benefits. Every day you and I are loaded with so much more than we even know sometimes or even comprehend only because we haven't opened up our mind or our will to it all yet. 
but open up your mind and your will to it all. Because here's what God's saying as I prepare to close and we do receive the offering. It is my will that you be elevated. Oh, see it, church. See yourself being elevated. See your business prospering. See your marriage prospering. See your family prospering. See your bank accounts prospering. See your heart prospering. See your mind prospering. That's what? Sit, tell it to me again, brother. Okay. Thank you, brother. Multiplication to you, brother. In the name of Jesus. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it right here, my brother. I'm gonna sow that right there. I'm gonna put that right there. In the name of Jesus. It is my will that you be elevated. Listen, it is my will that you be prospered and that you be enlarged and that you be increased and expanded. I just saw something there that I missed the first time around here just when I was speaking with you. Because I, sometimes what I do is I break things into sentences. I break it into pieces and I, di- I eat it. I digest on those words. But listen, it's a continual, it, this is all a continual thought, by the way. It is my will that you be prospered and that you be enlarged and that you be increased and expanded. Where? All of those prospered, enlarged, increased, and expanded far beyond where you are. It is my will. But here it comes, church. Here it comes. And I'm going to ask you to do this. Today's a faith day. This is my faith message today. Okay? What the Holy Ghost has given me. Interrupt me. Okay, we've got uh, a Holy Ghost interruption to save, you, to save your car. <laughs> Across the street, you may, hopefully you're in this service. There's a Murano, a Versa, is that how you say it? An Expedition and a Mazda. It's, it's a silver Murano, or Nissan, uh, a gray Nissan, a white Ford Expedition and a silver Mazda across the street. Um, if you want your tag number. They're actually towing it now. So if you, if you parked across the street in front of where, John? right across the street in the uh, warehouse area, I guess, right over here, then you need to get out there right now. In fact, we, we command that to stop in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood over that right now. Holy Ghost, rescue those cars. Put a stop to the tow man in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it, Lord. Favor, 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 favor in Jesus' name. We loose the angels of God to save those cars right now in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. Okay, band, we're almost there. Yes, we are. You've, I know you, you hear me repeat myself many times, but here we go. Because this is it, church. This is it. This is the bottom line right now. Because you see all those words that we spoke before, they don't come to pass unless you and I do this. So I want you to say with me by faith today. Say, this is the faith message. By faith today, I accept these words. So here's, what, here's our part. We're gonna release our faith. Faith is not only something we receive from the Lord, but it's something we give back to him. Faith is a gift. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So what is it that you and I should be hearing every day? The word of God. If you want your faith to grow, what are you going to have to hear? The word of God. And doesn't it make sense? The more words you hear, the more faith will come. You see, God wants his people to be strong in faith in these last days. In fact, I'm, gonna, I'm capsuling my message even with this right now because this is what the Lord put on my heart. This is our beginning place. He said to me in that, through the prophecy that he gave the brother Copeland, he ministered to my heart and said, 2016, the great year. Then the prophet of God said to him, he asked him, Lord, the great year of what? And he waited for 
a little season, a little while. And the Lord answered back and answered, it's the great year for whatever you need it to be. So say with me, this is the great year. And it's the great year for whatever I need it to be. But then the Lord went on to say, it is a great year of faith. So connected to this great year is faith. If you are, and I are going to have a great year, we have to be people who live by faith. We have to be people who walk by faith. We have to be faith children of a faith God. We can only come to him one way, and that is with faith. There's only one way that you please him, and that is with faith. And it's through faith that you access everything that grace has made available. So we're gonna learn more about that as we go. So I close with this, as we lift our hands to heaven. If you wanna be a part of this, if you wanna be a part of this prosperous church, and I believe you do, I mean, everybody wants to prosper. The world wants to prosper. Anybody who does it is only because, I'm gonna tell you the truth, the only reason people don't think that they're supposed to prosper is because they were taught wrong. Amen. Taught wrong. And some of it has come from the pulpits. I'm just gonna be honest with you. But that's not what the word teaches. He said that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Say, faith, faith. is my uh, uh, lifeline <laughs> to the blessings of God. How many of you wanna grow in faith with us here? How many of you wanna grow in faith? Amen, amen, amen. That's a declaration to you, Father. We desire to grow in faith. Thank you for ministering faith to our hearts as this year even comes to an end in the name of Jesus. So say this with me as we reach our hands to heaven. We've heard these words, faith came to us. God wants us to be elevated. He wants us to be prosper. He wants us to be enlarged. He wants us to be increased and expanded far beyond where we are. He said, it is my will. So our response to him today is this, and I want you to say it out loud with me. Say, Lord... I accept your will. I submit to your will. I embrace your will. I believe and pursue your will. And it will be established in me and on me and upon me and through me and to me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And everybody said, amen. Ushers, let's receive. The, our special ties and offerings. Band, go ahead and play. Goodness, my goodness, my goodness. You know, you got, you have, you have all you can do not to do a little. I'm telling you guys, don't do that to mom. 
my, oh my, oh my. I wanted to get up here for just a couple minutes before we close service, if you will be so kind as to, uh, and ushers, if you would kindly hurry, run, 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 and get back here quick, 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 all right? Oh, we have some available too, they're still here. Good. Some of the ushers. But Pastor Stan, I want to just say something. You have no idea, because I have not spoken to you at all, about what God has been doing with me personally in the last, I would say, at least six months of my life, maybe, whatever. But church, pay attention to what he said today. There is going to come a time when you are going to have to literally receive I'm going to just say this because I don't, I don't want to elongate it. On Friday nights, God is leading me into something that I never thought I was going to ever get into. So it would, if you are available on Friday night to come here, particularly pertaining to what Pastor Stan had to say this morning, And then that song this morning, I am. Until you become what these words are, and only then will you become the manifestation of them. And that's what we're going to work on on Friday nights. We're going to go into a place of becoming before we become. Yes, amen. That's it. And I am convinced, and I, I've got, I don't get chills, chills, goosebumps. I'm a very, I'm a very practical, supernatural Christian. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> It's true. And, uh, but I, I absolutely believe with all my heart, church, that God is now taking the body of Christ into a place of such revelation and such understanding. And the thing of it is, church, that there is a parallel. There's a parallel in the spiritual and the natural. And there's a lot of things in the natural we're called natural. But I'm going to say they're supernatural because there's knowledge coming out of people that's being printed for us to study, to understand how literally we function and how God has made our natural, we'll call them capabilities, to work with our spiritual capabilities. And it's big. I can see, I'm beginning to see how we can get there. I'm beginning to see it. I can understand now when God told Abraham what he was going to do and how there was a change of his name. There was change of words. There was change of conversation. There was change of thoughts. There was change of what you saw. And it had to become a passion. It became a passion of Abraham's. And when it became a passion, he never lost sight of it. And he was fully persuaded. Yeah. We're going to a place where we're going to be able to understand. And we're going to understand in such a way that we are going to be so fully persuaded. Nothing but nothing but the goodness of God and the blessing of God is going to come on you. I say it and I say it with boldness. I say it and declare it in the name of Jesus. If you'll go there, you'll get it. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I'd like to speak a blessing over you. Wait, wait, I'm not oh, finished. Okay. <laughs> now... One of the things that's going to open up this wide world for you is your praise and worship. Ooh, yeah. It's your praise and worship. You're going to worship him when it looks like you shouldn't worship him. We were singing a song Friday night. Uh, I feel like praising the Lord. 
I said, somebody should write a song. I'm going to praise the Lord whether I feel like it or not. Amen. Because that's, oh, you're going to be, you are going to be tested. That's right. The devil is not going to like where I'm going. Uh. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I, ushers, now they're back, I'm sure. Please, everyone, take one or two or whatever. This is beautiful. In his presence. And on the back of it, we have our Debbie and we have David Ellis, their pictures. And now they are going to be working together here. But David Ellis is also bringing in the Kenneth Copeland singers. And I do believe our praise and worship team, if I'm not mistaken, you're, you're, you're going to be involved in this. Actually, I'm going to ask David, which you will have a rehearsal the night before. I'm going to ask David, because he's coming in early, to take our group of singers and really work for the, with them. And that night, we are going to go into places we have not been with praise and worship. I am believing it. I am believing it. I am believing that God has called this meeting for a particular purpose, because I know we are on the verge of an opening of the minds and the spirit our spirit, but our minds too. We've left our minds someplace else and we've got to unite the mind and the spirit because it's then we're going to have what we're supposed to have. Can everybody say amen? Amen. Amen. So I'm excited about it. And so that's why I'm encouraging also on Wednesday night because we just have a free fall with the Holy Ghost. And I do know that he's going to take us into this place because if he's taken me, I'm taking you. Praise Amen. Amen. Yeah. Have you received? All right. Don't put it up. Oh, by the way, see this? How many have their, their, uh, what do you call it? The board? What do you call that? Terry? Vision board. Vision board. Vision board. The vision board. Take one of these. Put it on your vision board. Oh, 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 oh. Take one of these. I heard recently that there was a, a gentleman that uh, just because of practicing, really practicing and believing and receiving what I'm hoping to take this, when, this Friday night to, that this gentleman received within one month something he started to believe for. And it was a fancy Mercedes. <laughs> I said, wait a minute here now. God is no respecter of person. That guy's got something I need. <laughs> because it, it's supposed to work for me just like it works for him. Okay? So we're going there, church. I am anyway. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're going with you. How many just said, I am? I am. Glory to God. Have you any idea what you just did in the spirit? When you say, I am, I am. it becomes, I am. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Glory be to God. Well, there's someone here who may need to receive Jesus as Lord. And we would be amiss if we closed the service without giving someone that opportunity. So with heads bowed and eyes closed and no one looking around, and I know that the service ran over just a little bit, but it was all good. If you're here today and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you need to receive his gift of eternal life. You desire assurance that you're saved and or you were once in the house of God, you were once, how do I say this, Father? You were in Father's house, but like the prodigal son or prodigal daughter, you stepped away and you started doing your own thing and you found out that it's not working. But you've come to your senses and you say, I'm coming home, Father, I'm coming home. If I'm speaking to you today to either receive Jesus or come back to him today, 
Would you be so kind as to lift your hand so I may pray with you? Anyone here? I see that hand. Lift that hand up, please, real high. If that, if that, was, if that was a hand for, for salvation, it might have been a, another hand for a different reason. I'm not sure. But if there's anyone who needs to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, we want you to raise your hand real high. And I would like for, to, for you to come and join me at the altar because we want to pray with you today. Would that, if, you, if you've already accepted Christ, you don't have to come, but if you need to accept Christ, if I'm speaking to anyone in this room, then please come to the altar right now because we're here for you. Anyone? I saw some hands did go up, but it might have been an expression of, of gratitude and praise to the Lord. I see no hands. So here's, before we go, I want you all to just raise your hands with me and say, Father, Jesus is Lord. And I confess his lordship in me and over me and through me and upon me for all eternity. I believe in my heart you raised him from the dead. And with my own mouth, I confess I am saved. I am healed. I am delivered. I am prosperous. I am successful. I am who you say that I am. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. I bless you. We bless you in the name of Jesus. The altar is open. Come and worship God. And I speak peace and prosperity to you this week. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.